He has such a big ego. My little sister copies everything my mom and I do. I had a crazy dream last night. What do you think that means? Oh my gosh, that teacher is so anal about everything. My mom deserves someone better than my dad. Have you ever considered talking to a therapist about that? Maybe just to get it out? Sigmund Freud. Without knowing his name or what he has contributed to the field of psychology, his ideas follow us. From the sayings we use to the topics of conversation we engage in, his contributions to psychology, however controversial, have been carried through our society since he first introduced them. On May 6, 1856, a Sigmund Freud was born in what is now known as Preber Czech Republic, but soon moved to Vienna. After living out his early life in Vienna, he began attending medical school in 1873, officially earning his medical degree seven years later and jumped into the strict world of psychiatry. At a young age, Freud was trained as both a medical doctor and a neurologist. As one individual summarized his opinions of Freud, he stated that Freud's kind of physician was to be a student of history, religion, and the arts. Through his unique approach to psychology, Sigmund Freud was able to publish numerous literary works discussing his ideas. Some of the most notable contributions included his topics of dream interpretation, the unconscious mind, and early development. And now, let's hear from Tabitha Hart, who graduated with a bachelor's degree in psychology two years ago and is now a research coordinator for the Department of Psychology at the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. Freud, most important theory was psychoanalytic theory. He was within psychoanalytic theory and the unconscious mind. Freud focused on how early childhood and especially early traumatic childhood experiences shape the unconscious mind. And today, we still think that's true, and so that's really a big thing that he did for the field, but we now know more about things like environment, genetics, um, psychosocial factors that influence behavior, not just initial childhood experiences and unconscious behaviors being drawn out from those experiences. Now, let's go back in time and see what Freud has to say. One of my least accepted ideas is that of the psychosexual stages. These were my ideas for how individuals move through various stages of development related to sexual drives, and when something went wrong in these stages, people got stuck there mentally. I thought that this could result in some of the oddities we see in adults. According to my theory, if all of the stages are completed successfully, it will result in a healthy personality in adulthood. However, if a child's needs are not met during any of these stages, it can result in negative behaviors as an adult. For example, if a child's needs are not met during the oral stage, it may result in them smoking later in adulthood. Another one of my many ideas dealt with the unconscious mind. You see, everyone behaves differently, and it's not always due to the thoughts and processes which we are aware of. I divided the levels of consciousness into three different levels, the id, the superego, and the ego. The id is the unconscious part of the brain that is the root of an individual's impulsive behavior. There isn't any real thinking that comes out of this part of the consciousness. The superego, on the other hand, is more of the babysitter of the id. It helps to suppress the impulses that arrive from the id so that an individual fits in with what the expected behaviors are for the individual within their society. Lastly, the ego is a sort of mediator in this context. It helps to find more logical solutions to the needs of the id, rather than striving for a result of perfect behavior in an individual. People didn't see the point in looking into that. It wasn't seen as scientific. So that was a really big step, and that's probably the biggest reason they call him the father of psychology. He really did find the, the scientific aspect of the field. Even despite this, Freud did still maintain a following of people interested in his new ideas. Among these individuals was another important psychologist by the name of Carl Jung, who was a friend of Freud. Carl Jung is basically, he was a really early supporter of Freud. He also really studied this like unconscious mind and really agreed with those theories. But he focused a little bit more on sexuality and it was a little pseudoscience-y, a little bit 
uh, psychic energy esque, not as empirically supported today. Despite my novel ideas and following within my field, my ideas quickly became a controversial topic in the eyes of many of my peers and those in society. One man, a psychologist from Berlin by the name of Albert Mall, criticized my work by saying this, Freud endeavors to establish his theory by the aid of psychoanalysis, but this involves so many arbitrary interpretations that it is impossible to speak of the proof in any strict sense of the term. Fortunately, Albert's opinions were echoed by others. In fact, one of the earliest supporters I had, Ernest Jones, even went on to say this about one of my works. The three essays were shockingly wicked. Freud was a man with an evil and obscene mind. This assault on the innocence of childhood was unforgivable. The saddest betrayal came in the form of a comment of one of my dearest colleagues, Carl Jung. I used to be a firm follower of Freud, and we were quite close, but at this point I feel that Freud's emphasis on sexuality as a basic cause of neurosis is questionable at the least, and possibly even inadmissible biologically. With all of these individuals sharing their less than positive opinions on my work, and the treatments that were already accepted or would eventually be, I hoped that my contributions to the field of psychology would not be completely lost to my detractors. So as far as what I was uh, personally taught about Freudian psychology, I was specifically taught about the flaws in it and how it is not as sound as empirical research is today, especially in regards to psychoanalytic um, theory and therapy. Although Freud's ideas are not practiced in the same ways as they once were, and some of his ideas have been evolved past due to their scientific flaws or the increased accessibility to medications for psychological issues, they have not been completely lost. From articles pondering Freud's ideas, to the modern practice of talk therapy, select accepted ideas like the unconscious mind, and even some of the words and ideas worked into our conversations. Sigmund Freud's ideas, however controversial they were, and continue to be, have built themselves into modern day. As a more modern historian once said, the very fierceness and persistence of his detractors are a wry tribute to the staying power of Freud's ideas.